Welcome back to the show. In the last episode, we beat up one of Megan's heavyweights, which is interesting since we're not a heavyweight. That gives her some uh, intriguing ideas, especially since we're out of prison. Let's see how Andre handles it. I'm sure he handles it well. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sure he'd like to handle right, we, her we were, well. It was sparring. I didn't want to... Mason Brooks is an asshole. He needed that beat down. I like him better already. In that case, I'm happy to help Mason become a better person. Mason's a ranked heavyweight. You whipped a ranked heavyweight. You're still in great shape, Andre. I can get you work as a sparring partner. Are you serious? Antoine Barr's camp starts in two weeks. Ah, what if you broke my ribs, lady? Oh, I guess we're too happy to care. All right, more sparring, apparently. And I'm wearing red? Knock bar down twice with body punches, not head punches. Okay. Oops. In three rounds? That's gonna be a little tricky. The Akamara is here, by the way. She Hi. hasn't said anything yet. Yeah, for some I was reason. watching. There was a movie but, uh, on. <laughs> oh, you God. Gotta, you gotta stay quiet when you watch the movie. That's... This I must be a little right fixed, too, because... Right in that to that. I shouldn't be able to knock a dude down with a simple body He's hook. like, oh, God, you hit me in the nip knop. I sure did. You, you all right, buddy? No? Uh, all right. Just bruised the shit out of my nip knop. Nip knop's a fun word to say. <laughs> when it comes to body hooks, I like doing that stutter step forward. Like that except actually landing it because it tends to do some pretty good damage wow he does have quite a lot of tattoos now andre that is they have a decent tattoo system in the creation engine but it's not all that great i always thought tattoos in video games kind of look funky because like i mean when it's a when it's a paste on like a all right then when, when it's, like, okay, with Andre, his entire body is modeled with that texture. But when you have a created character and you're basically slapping a sticker on him, it looks a little weirder. Yeah, because it's a layer. Right. Rather than a texture. Exactly. So it always looks a little too fake unless you screw with it. I've noticed, like, in games where, like, the cell, I'll finish that in a second. Have a seat. You sparred with two heavyweights, and you whipped both their asses. Andre, you could make a comeback. And how am I going to do that? With my help? I still want to be your manager, Andre. How does your father feel about that? I no longer work for DL. We have philosophical differences. But I can get you a license, and I can get you a fight. If you want to fight. Of course he wants to fight. It's in his Surprise blood, return! Uh, Yay! <laughs> I'm coming out of retirement too, kid. <laughs> Told you I'd change his mind. Aww. <laughs> Jailhouse boxing makes you tough, but it ain't professional. Training you montage. Why do I get You're to You're a heavyweight no now. Die. Heavyweight is a different world than middleweight. I don't want you to embarrass yourself, so look, we're gonna start with a couple of low-key fights in Mexico. These guys are durable, and they will be coming to fight. That song that overplayed with that last montage is my favorite one they do in the game. I can't remember what the song is, though. Anyway. Yay, Fro. Get a, fight, get a win in your first heavyweight fight, that's it. Should be easy enough. You got friggin' buff. Yup. Was he was he less in shape when I was doing the sparring? He wasn't less in shape per se. He was leaner rather than huh. bulkier. Neat. Um, you got me thinking about tattoos. Like, what's your favorite game tattoo engine? Um, 
Yeah, let me finish what I was saying before. <laughs> I'm going to forget. Like, I like it in Sims or WWE games where you can adjust the opacity, opacity, oh, the yeah. transparency. Because if you fade a tat, it looks a lot less fake. Oh, in, yeah. In engines. Anyway, I don't really know. Um, like, I kind of like the Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto engines, but... Because of the way they are, the tats look more legit. Yeah, I liked Saints Row 2 specifically because you could move the friggin' tat around and then fade it. Right. Gradually. So you can do the storyline thing where you just, like, keep going into Rusty's Needle and, like, dulling your tats as, like, they're aging. Right. Well, like, in a lot of game engines that had tattoos, either you could move it or, well, like, usually if you can move it, it looks more fake because it is a layer. Whereas with, like, Grand Theft Auto, the tats are in specific places, which gives yeah. the artists abilities to uh, actually adjust them and make them look real. And so it looks better. Yeah, they did but, that in Saints Row the third and four. Right. But then when you can fade it, then it takes away the weirdness of having... Um, it takes away the weirdness of having a tat that looks fake kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah. I like I don't know if there's one particular system I like or don't like anymore because both WWE and The Sims 4 do it pretty well. The Sims 4 selection is garbage, but whatever, you can always mob that in. But like with with the WWE one, you can use any Basically, you can use any design that's in the game as a tat and fade it correctly and color it correctly so it looks legit. So, And I'm sure more and more games are getting there. I am kind of being aggressive in this one. But he's being incredibly aggressive on me. I'm thinking back. Saints Row 2, some of the tats, especially the ones I used, had the benefit of having thinner lines, which drew away from the fakeness of the opaque tats. Oh. Huh. Like, it has been a while since I've played uh, Saints Row 2. I almost said Sims 2, although that statement's true. Anyway, um, it's been a while since I've played Saints Row 2, so I can't remember exactly how yeah. it went down. I can hardly get the damn thing to work without it breaking. <laughs> yeah. No wonder they stuck hole in the earth on the track list. Yeah, exactly. Saints Row 1 was a horrible buggy mess. I was... It's... I think I've said before, Saints Row 1 was actually one of the four reasons I bought an Xbox 360 in the first place. And I was incredibly disappointed with it. Um, and I didn't think they would wind up making a sequel, and they did. And Saints Row 2, when it worked, was really, really fun. Oh, yeah. But it, too, was a buggy mess. <laughs> and then Saints Row 3 came out and turned the entire formula around. Oh, yeah. Start of the game. Get all your homies. Line up friggin' Gat and Troy and, like, pick Piercer Shandy and just drive around and run over shit. The fun will never end until you fall through the highway. <laughs> it's a very specific highway. This is a very specific chunk of land that will always depress itself. In Saints Row 3? In Saints Row 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say Troy's not in 3. Yeah, I was going to say, 2 was a... Uh, I was going to say, th or 3 was really tightly programmed. Yeah, and 4 was only cameos. Tears. Yup. And then Got Out of Hell was one cameo for one measly side mission. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much exchanging blows on this one, but I have a feeling, if nothing else, I'm winning on points. If Saints Row is working on a sequel, I hope they bring back our conflicted cop buddy. I should look at that. I I know they had talked about making a Saints Row 5, and somebody had implied that they were already working on it before Saints Row 4 was done, but that was before THQ went bu belly up, so I don't know if, like... Like, I'm not even sure if Get Out of Hell was ever su was supposed to be what it was. Like, yeah. Get Out of Hell wound up being a standalone game, but I'm not sure if that was intended to be their fifth game or if yeah. that was intended to be then, a DLC or... Even then, Get Out of Hell relied on a lot of tell, not show, which tells me that they had a lot of stuff that they wanted to do. Yeah. Like... 
Yeah, I'm definitely. I was gonna say hurting this dude. the whole like project was sold off to Deep Silver, right? I don't remember who owns the rights anymore. Deep Silver was the studio who developed it, I think. But they were owned by THQ, and they were sold off when THQ went bankrupt, but I don't even know if Deep Silver still exists. They might. I was going to say, their credits were on Gat Out of Hell and Saints Row 4, so they might have retained the assets. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know all that information's public. And even then, but if, if they go the way of a reboot, like they teased in Gat Out of Hell in one of your endings, like... I want to see where they go with it. Yep. Like, even if it's a giant train wreck, I will make love to that train wreck. <laughs> I, will I know kiss you on are. That train wreck. I will sing it, sweet nothings. You are one of the biggest Saints Row fans I've ever met. Like, I, the mere fact that you beat the game, it was like your second playthrough. You beat it and immediately just started up a new character. Like, there are very few games that even I'll do that to. Oh, yeah. Like, I beat it as self-insert, and then I'm like, let's re-roll. Hello, Bryn. I like Bryn. She's cute. The name of one of her characters. Yes. Not a reference to anything. But, uh... And then I finished with Bryn, and I started another one. Good night. Uh, that might not be full good night. That was a flash knockdown, though. That's actually... Apparently a lot of people will roll multiple bosses. Oh, yeah. Well, the voice acting in Saints Row is solid. You got Troy Baker, Nolan North, and Laura Bailey just as three of them. Just be yourself. Be Nolan? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I wasn't too sure about that game when you first showed me Saints Row 2, but I latched onto it like a motherfucker. I can usually know what someone will like in games. Usually. Um, I am still surprised. Like, I've been... My current addiction... Not Sons of Anarchy. My current addiction and obsession um, is Subnautica, which I don't know if I'm going to do for the channel, but it's a underwater survival game, and it's super fun. Um... And I didn't think she'd like it, but surprisingly, she is into it, other than the fact that the ocean makes her fall asleep. Yeah, that's my only problem with it. I'm going to start it up, play a minute, and then pass out. <laughs> so, I'm hoping they add a multiplayer to it. Um, the devs said it would be, it will be extremely difficult to add a multiplayer component to it at this point. Because um, apparently they went through an engine change, and... So in order to rewrite the code to make it multiplayer, they're going to have to, like, rewrite huge chunks of the engine. So I don't know if it'll ever, uh, I don't know if it'll ever get there. Hi, buddy. You have a bruised right cheek there, which is perfect for a left hook. Sweet. Like that one and that one. And that one. And he's wearing the colors of every Italian restaurant ever. Well, he's Mexican, so yes. His his boxing gloves are little Mexican flags. Did you know, according to the the flag code, like it's technically disrespectful to wear flags as uh, apparel? Oh yeah. Unless Doesn't it's a people. pin. What? Doesn't stop people. Oh no! I mean, it's also protected as freedom of speech, so you can do whatever the hell you want. All right, get off me, dude. But, like, supposedly, like, okay, like, when Olympians win, a lot of times they drape the flag around them and do a victory lap, and that shit's technically against the code. But nobody cares. Yeah, it's like, my parents are ex-Air Force, or they're, like, super sticklers for flag etiquette. Like, whenever it rained on base, my mom would make people do proper etiquette whenever it was her turn to bring the flag in. That's cool. But the problem with that is when they left, like, the service, like, around here, nobody takes care of their flags properly. Nope. We're talking, there's this big-ass one in, like, Fairborn that flies occasionally. The thing's torn to shreds well, on we, most days. We have a VFW down the street from where we live here in Xenia, and friggin' the flag's always out even in darkness or rainy weather. Yeah. I mean, the one on the city building, they have a freaking light on it, but even that one's kind of tattered. Yep. 
It is what it is. Stop guarding, you asshole. Let me knock you out. Let me knock you out. I think I get an achievement for hitting certain things. Let me knock the story you in mode. the face. Man, I'm glad I didn't. Eat floor, bitch. I'm glad I only left it on the pro difficulty level. I feel like I'm uh, not living up to my skill here. Even then, I feel like it's escalating. Oh, in difficulty? Oh, yeah. yeah. The final boss, so to speak, is... All right, well, that... <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like is, you're uh, beyond pretty pro hard. At this I point. think I caught him right... Oh, I caught him on the side of the head. Ow. I thought I caught him on the cheek. Temple. Yeah. No, I, I thought I caught him on the cheek. Where is Come on, is. get up immediately. He is. He's going to stay down. Or not. Or not. That's all right. We got two minutes. Yep, we sure do. Plenty of time. Plenty of time to put babies down for an out. Am I getting too cocky? Uh, no. Because in combat my sports. Dick on the table. Am I getting too cocky? Wow. <laughs> too far? My brain filter just caught something. Anyway, I'm pretty sure he's not getting up from that one. That one caught him right at the cut. Sack of potatoes. Sack of potatoes. Ah, oh, microphone bump. Yep, he's done. That, that the crawling on the toes and knuckles is a stay down animation. Yay, Andre Bishop! Well, we're gonna celebrate that. Oh God! It, it jumped the. Uh, uh, let me pause. Let me pause, you son of a bitch. We're gonna celebrate that win and our comeback tomorrow. So thanks for watching, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow for another episode. Bye.